The Dustin Daniels Show. Unashamedly proclaiming God's purity through His Son, Jesus Christ. Devoted to saving marriages. Dedicated to protecting children. Addressing sex with biblical truth and without shock value. You're listening to the intersection of life and lust. Call toll free at 1 855 5 Dustin. And now, here's your host, Purity Pastor Dustin Daniels. Don't love the digital world's ways, don't love the digital world's goods. Love of technology squeezes out the love of the Father. Practically everything that goes on in the digital world, the wanting your own way, the wanting everything for yourself, the wanting to appear important on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn has nothing to do with the Father. It just isolates you from Him, the world and all its wanting, and its wanting, and its wanting is on the way out. But whoever does what God wants is set for eternity. First John 2 from the message with a few added words for effect from yours truly. So my question to you is, are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out from life in this digital world we live in? Does this idea of living freely and, and lightly sound too good to be true? And I'm, I'm curious to know what happens when you, when you head out the door for school or work or church and you forget your phone and you're more than halfway there. Do you have to turn around to get it? <laughs> Are you like me? Are you easily irritable when your email is not working? How do you respond when you can't connect to your Wi-Fi? Is your laptop or your, your tablet rendered useless at that point? So today we continue our conversation on how technology is shaping us, how it's molding us, how it is literally changing the way that we think and reprogramming our brains. The digital invasion in our lives has had a huge impact on relationships in particular with dating, sex, marriage, and pornography. And I'm so honored to have Dr. Archibald Hart and Dr. Sylvia Hart freed Back on the air to continue our discussion from last week regarding their book titled The Digital Invasion, How Technology is Shaping You and Your Relationships. Dr. Hart is the author of 30 books and is the Senior Professor of Psychology and Dean Emeritus at Fuller Theological Seminary. He is well known for his ministry to churches through training and education. Dr. Sylvia Hart Freed has a master's degree specializing in Christian counseling with a doctorate of ministry and leadership. And she specializes in spiritual formation and internet addiction. Dr. Hart and Dr. Freed, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Thank Justin. Great to be with, with you again. again. Last week, we discussed the digital invasion from an overview perspective, and we talked about a, a wide variety of topics. And you know what? This week, I, I kind of wanted to dive into the specific topic of what technology has done and really is, is currently doing to our our dating and our marriage relationships, specifically when it comes to intimacy. So, Dr. Hart, let's start with you. You certainly are no stranger to technology. As you look in the rearview mirror over the past 10, say, 20 years, what has technology done to our dating world, in your yeah. opinion? This, 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 again, is, a, is, is one of these double-sided issues. On the one hand, it has done some wonderful things. I I'm a close friend of one of the creators of uh, you know dating services uh, where you search for your partner and uh, and it's been very effective, no doubt about it. So on the one side, there is a, a it, it has opened up the world uh, for couples to to unite and connect, particularly in our Christian world. So there's no doubt about it that there's a huge plus in my book on on that. However. There is a, a downside. Like everything in this technology stuff, the tech, not the problems, not the technology. It's wonderful. It's, it's God creation, but uh, we, we don't always use it properly and, 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 and don't have the appropriate uh, limits. Set. The digital impact on dating for, uh, is, can, can be a problem 
because uh, you, you start out with seeing someone on a, on a screen, uh, it, they, they, <laughs> they have their best put their best uh, foot forward. They, <laughs> they describe their descriptions are all pretty good on the positive side. Sure. And so it builds, the, the problem with it uh, that I have found is that it leads to some unrealistic expectations. In other words, the partner you are beginning to date on the Internet uh, is always better than the person you really have to face. It's, it's bad enough uh, dating face-to-face with someone and, and then get married and then realize you didn't know them well enough then. But in the, the Internet dating stuff, it, it's even worse. It leads to unrealistic expectations and can uh, as easily lead to a breakup of, of a marriage. In other words, you, you date someone, you get married, oh, uh, I, I can go on the internet uh, behind my partner's back and find someone else and then divorce this one. <clears throat> so, uh, I, I, again, uh, uh, Dustin, I, I think our problem here is that we haven't stepped forward as a church to help guide our parishioners who uh, can use this in, in very, very helpfully, but to use it in a, a sensible way. And by that I mean, if you meet someone on the Internet, as soon as possible, as soon as you possibly can, you have to realize that, that contact. You've got to be uh, connected to that person in reality, because that is the only way you can develop a, a true love relationship. So, uh, you know, I could uh, go on long and long on this topic, but for me, <laughs> the, the important issue is that we as a church need to uh, be more instructive. Uh, we need to be teaching our folks how to use these resources and then facilitate uh, uh, an early re- connection in, in reality, because that is the only way that you will be able to uh, develop true dating relationships. I agree with everything that you just said, Dr. Hart. It's amazing to me how many men that I have the privilege of speaking to, single men, and there seems to be some type of loneliness, Dr. Freed. Is is there a sense of loneliness kind of being transmitted by social networks, not just dating sites, but just the social online network itself? Well, you know, we, we have studies that are showing that the more time we spend in social media, the lonelier someone will be, which just seems, I guess, sort of strange to us that we're this hyper-connected um, generation. You would think with all of this connecting, I can instantly text someone, I can tweet, I can get on Facebook. Wouldn't we have this, you know, euphoria of connection? But the, the statistics are showing it's just the opposite. And really, the climate of social media itself, as Christians, it's really important we get this. It really breeds envy, jealousy, and loneliness. Now, are there wonderful aspects to social media? Absolutely. I tweet, you tweet, you know, there is that part of it. But there's this dark side as well that the comparing, the contrasting, and the competing that is happening on a lot of the social media creates the jealousy and and, and the loneliness. And we have to remember that a lot of what's happening in social media is presenting a false self. We present our representative, as we're even relating this to the dating situation, you know, we, we we put the very best pictures, the very best posts, the very best of, of ourselves, which isn't really the whole picture. And so when we see these great vacations people are taking or we read their tweets, or we read their posts, <laughs> yeah. we compare it to our life and think, gosh, Susie's life is so much more exciting. And, and her husband just said, I'm married to the most wonderful woman in the world, and, and my husband didn't post that. Gosh. And now suddenly that comparing and the contrasting makes me feel either jealous, empty, lonely, and we're also seeing a huge rise in narcissism, and that's really important to see that YouTube, broadcast yourself. It's all about you. Um, it's amazing to me that people are sending you know, pictures of their burrito, and, and, the, and not only that they're <laughs> sending the picture of the burrito, but they really believe oh, that goodness. people want to see that burrito. Yeah. That's concerning to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Dr. Hart, let's, talk about, let's move from dating to marriage now. You state a statistic in your book. A recent study shows that as many as one in five divorces involve what's called Facebook affairs. Facebook, with all you know, has again. Let me say, has all this good side, but a bad side to it is that it opens up your history. Then a wave, a strong movement of um, partners in marriage who are unhappy with their marriage to go to the internet and see if they can search out. Uh, previous 
dating uh, contacts, previous people they were in love with or even married to previously. And uh, Facebook uh, is, uh, has, has been the, ma- the main culprit here in fostering this uh, going backwards. Instead of, uh, you know, a marriage is hard work and marriage takes a, a, a commitment. And uh, the ease with which you can retreat and find someone else to, to replace your present partner is, is the sad thing about, about Facebook. And it has, in fact, uh, destroyed many relationships that would have just hung together and worked through their differences um, who have just thrown in the towel prematurely. Today on the show, Dr. Archibald Hart and Dr. Sylvia hart Freed, authors of the book titled The Digital Invasion, How Technology is Shaping You and Your Relationships. And Dr. Freed, let's talk about the church's favorite subject, and that is pornography, right? Let's talk about the, the, the major factors, uh, why internet porn is is so addicting. Can I use that word, addicting, with, yes, you can. with pornography? Yes, you can. <laughs> Absolutely. And so what we're seeing is it's, it's the ease of access, it's the availability and the addictive nature of internet porn that is making it so dangerous. As we talk about in the book, it used to be someone would have to go to a bookstore, they would have to you know, go into a movie, make sure no one saw them. But we have this 24-7 access right at our fingertips. And part of the other problem is we, this technology has been, you know, growing so exponentially, but the filters and the blockings are just not there. Um, and some statistics on that, only 3% of boys and 17% of girls have never seen Internet pornography. I find that wow. absolutely astounding. And also we just talked about Facebook affairs, but 56% of divorces involve pornography, and as, that's the statistics. And I can tell you as a counselor, just about every divorce, it seems like, that I'm counseling people through involves some form of pornography. So very, very um, addicting. Sex is the number one term that is searched on Google. It's a huge, huge moneymaker um, and is only just growing more and more in the ways they're, they're reaching um, women, children, teens, and something that the church we don't hear a lot about and need to desperately. If you are struggling with pornography right now, I want to encourage you to go to the website, DustinDanielsRadio.com, and there are resources of dozens of ministries to get you face-to-face in front of a group, a pastor, uh, a counselor, and a church uh, for you to walk through this journey. Now, Dr. Hart, experts are telling us that, that young men are being... Uh, neutered, and I'll use that that word in quotes. Yeah. They're being neutered. Yeah. Can you say more on that? Well, yeah. neutered in the sense that, uh, let's face it, uh, um, not not every wife we we marry can compare with what uh, is available on in in the pornography. So the neutering effect is that uh, your own partner can come to a point where that partner can no longer give you the arousal you need for a satisfactory sexual relationship. The, the neutering is that that you are uh, becoming addicted to such a high quality, uh, high quality, that's, that's not the real phrase, but a, such a highly stimulating form of pornography mm. that you cannot arouse, cannot arouse yourself for any of for any other, uh, in, in, in any other way. And uh, this leaves you sort of a, a neutered, neutered in the sense of your marital partner, not to your pornography. And, and so that is why so many men, and I must add this, that this is a, a, as common in, in pastors as well, uh, you know, go late at night, they go on the Internet, they, they, they get uh, pornography going, they get aroused, they, they get their satisfaction there. And when it comes back to their marital relationship, they mute it. They just have nothing to offer. If this is happening in your life, you really need to get some good um, marital counseling because this can be very destructive to a marriage. Dr. Freed, you, you talk about, let's go back to the addiction and, and what God's Word says. It's a bondage as well, and you, you call pornography a super drug. Can you explain? It's, a, it's an arousal addiction. So what that means is that it's going to require more and more stimulating things to get the excitement. And, and also, you know, I want to bring this up, especially if we have um, parents listening that we have what's called gateway, like you have a gateway drug. There's a gateway into 
the Internet pornography, and a lot of it is what we're seeing, you know, watch a Miley Cyrus video today or some of the music and the lyrics, and even, even in television shows, the suggestive nature. So when our young people are seeing these type of things, that's a gateway that, it's, that it sort of arouses things in them. And just for parents to really be careful what they're listening to and watching, that keeping that purity of heart is so important, even if it seems like, well, that's not you know, necessarily pornography. There's a lot of, of that that's gateway. So I just wanted to say that. But the reason why we're, we're seeing the super drug of pornography, and this is um, when we did the research, Mark Castleman's done a great job. He calls it the drug of the new millennium. And he says that as you're starting to look at the pornography, your brain narrows its, its focus, and it's called an erototoxin, and that your body, it's such a powerful thing, that your body has no built-in mechanism to, to cope with it, to be able to, um, to override it. And so once you go into what's sort of called this Internet pornography funnel, once you get into that um, very narrow part of the, of the funnel, the brain is so hijacked that it's almost impossible to, to turn back at that point. And so understanding the, the physiology, I think, is really important. There's some great work out there called The Demise of Guys, and this Philip Zimbardo wrote a book, and he said that young men today in, in many ways are relationally and vocationally doomed, and a big reason for that, he said, was Internet pornography and how we have this gateway, and at such exposure at, at such young ages, kids now at seven and eight years of age, of age getting exposed, and how that is, is rewiring the brain at such a young age. Now, I can hear some of my families, and especially my men that I... I'm able to speak with and, and pour into their lives. And these married folks, Dr. Hart, uh, I'll hear the guy go, you know what, but that's that's for single people. I don't see a problem bringing pornography into our marriage. So my question to you is, is that a good idea? It demeans the female. Yeah, you, you are being compared with a, an image of uh, almost perfection because they've, they've, they've you know, doctored it up, etc. So the, the, the wife is the one who always comes away feeling disrespected. There is a, a, a very clear evidence in, in the study, and we, we studied 2,000 Christian women, that, that uh, it's, it demoral, it's not just demoralizing, but demeaning to them to have to put up with, and many of them put up with the pornography with their, 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 their partner, just so, so that we can have some peace in the, in, in the marriage of the relationship. In the, but in the long term, it is not a very healthy uh, thing for, for the spouse, for the wife. And, and she is the one who has to pay the, the, the price for that, just so that the male can be satisfied. Yeah, it seems like there's a intimacy deficiency, right, Dr. Freed? When, as we talk about this this subject of all the digital invasion, and especially when it comes to uh, pornography and any type of erotic material, it, there's some type of intimacy disorder or deficiency. Could you say more on that? This one, there's definitely a connection because we are seeing, you know, we're having all these connections, hyper-connections, but we're not having intimacy. We're not having conversations in our relationships, and I think sort of that depersonalization in our digital world is impacting our sexuality. There's, there's no doubt about that. And, you know, I'm very concerned that people are not having that intimacy and, and that they're not feeling seen and valued and heard. And those are the three fundamental needs that God has created us to have fulfilled, that in our relationships we would feel seen, valued, and heard. But a big piece to this is we're not only not having conversations with each other, we're not having conversations with ourselves. There's a lack of hmm. self-awareness. And there's the lack of our conversations with God. And so that if we are in tune with ourselves, if we're in tune with what's going on in me right now, what am I feeling, what is it I'm trying to self-medicate, a lot of pornography use is, is self-medication as you would use any, any other type of drug. So that lack of tuning into your own self-awareness, the lack of talking with God, of, of including God in your conversations, of saying, God, sex is sacred and I want you to be a part of this. You know, if you can't honestly pray while you're having sex and, and include God in that, in that act of what you're doing, then that is not pleasing to God. And so I just think that that whole intimacy piece is a big part of what, what we're seeing and, and the depersonalization of it. So, Dr. Freed, what is the solution, and not just to the cyber sexual issues that we're talking about, but the technology how it is literally shaping us. If we're checking our phone 150 times a day, that statistic blows me away. 
But what is the solution to um, using this technology to ultimately benefit us and glorify God? Well, I think we've got to get back to, you know, our created intended design and that God has created us to be in a relationship with him to protect that God space. And, and as my dad started out, I think the first program, we've got to capture the Satan's desire in all of this to, to separate us from God, to separate us from ourselves and from each other. So I think on a fundamental level is for us to protect that God space, to realize, you know, our brains are wired for intimacy with God and that if we are having that compulsion for for all of that checking of smartphones and, and honestly probably even more than 150 times a day, we've got to take con- control of that and be spirit-led. And, and one of the things I've done by having my own digital boundaries is I don't check my smartphone the first thing in the morning. I don't sleep with my smartphone. You know, I don't have it under my pillow to check all night. And we've got to have boundaries to say this is where my digital life starts, this is where it ends. I want to be in, in my real life as much as possible. Do I text? Do I Facebook? Do I tweet? Absolutely. But constantly pulling us back to a real face-to-face relationship with God, an intimacy with ourselves, tuning in, being self-aware, and then as much as possible having face-to-face real-life conversations. If you can get up from your desk and say it in person, get up and do it. Try to build that real life as much as possible. And Dr. Hart, lastly, how would you encourage pastors and church leaders to address this digital impact yeah. on their lives? Yeah, there's, there's no doubt in my mind that we have a, 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 a wonderful opportunity here to step in and balance this all out. We need to provide, and I, I think it's best done through small groups, because the churches I've known who have done it through small groups have been very successful. But we have to educate a healthier approach to sexuality. My... my the uh, key is that as a church, we wake up, we need a wake-up call, we need to be uh, much more direct in educating uh, our, our congregations, particularly our couples, uh, uh, in their, and, and develop a healthier approach to sexuality. We need to put it in its proper perspective, we need to understand that there's many addictions associated with it, and uh, it's all uh, a, a, a high need for education. And I, I, I think unless we step up to the plate and provide that education, things are going to be a lot worse in the years to come. Dr. Archibald Hart and Dr. Sylvia Hartfried, authors of The Digital Invasion, How Technology is Shaping You and Your Relationships. Thank you so much for joining us. You are listening to The Dustin Daniels Show. God bless you. We'll see you next week. The Dustin Daniels Radio Show is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information with regard to the subject matter covered. This information is given with the understanding that neither the host nor the station is engaged in rendering counseling advice for your personal situation. If you need further help, we encourage you to seek the services of a Christ-based counseling professional. For more information on the radio show, visit DustinDanielsRadio.com.